let's look. We have a couple of others. I reprinted this list of criteria for us so that we can use that to think about this next problem. Before marketing a new product on a large scale, many companies conduct a consumer preference survey to determine whether the product is likely to be successful. And that's a good idea. Suppose a company develops a new diet soda and then conducts taste test, taste preference survey in which a hundred randomly chosen consumers state their preferences from among the new soda and the two leading sellers. So probably Coke and Pepsi, right? Let X be the number of the 100 who choose the new brand. So they're going to be the ones who choose the new brand over the two others. So let's start at the top of the list. Do we have N identical trials? And it looks like we have 100 people doing the taste test. So we have N equals 100. And we can assume that they were all doing the same taste test, tasting one, the new soda, tasting each of the other two, and stating which one they preferred. And so I'm going to assume those are identical. And then two outcomes for each trial, success or failure. And they did define down here, so the success is going to be choose choosing the new soda and failure for them is choosing other brands. So that's how you get around. There's three things that you're testing, but we want it to be binomial. Either they chose the new brand or they didn't, and that's how you can make it binomial. So yes, there is two. there are two. Success is choosing the new brand. Failure is not choosing the new brand. And then we need to know, is there a probability of success and a probability of failure? And it doesn't say what the probability of success and failure are, but we can sort of see that it could be calculated. It would be the number, so the probability of success, or the little p, would be the number choosing the soda over 100. And the probability of failure, or the Q, would just be 1 minus P. And so that seems like it's clear cut, like you can actually do it. So we have those. And then the trials are independent. So it doesn't say specifically how they did the experiment, but it does say they chose 100 randomly chosen people. So we're going to have to assume that they weren't all sitting in the same room testing the soda together and talking about it. Like they were all in little booths or blindfolded or who knows how they wanted to do the test so that they didn't actually know. But the outcome for one person we can assume is not influencing other people and their responses in the in the trial. So that would be the independent part. And so I think we can assume that it's independent. So we'll just put a little check mark there by independent. And then X is the number of successes in the trials. And let X be the number of the 100 who chose the new brand over the other two. And so definitely our X is set up to be the number of successes. And so what I'm going to say for this, for this study is that X for this study is a binomial random variable. And we have all the evidence there above. 
the parts that are set up already for us.